One name that commands attention in the world of fashion is Chanel. The French fashion brand is over 100 years old. The company is worth over $13 billion, and it employs up to 20,000 people across its 310 locations worldwide. With numbers like that, there is no doubt that Chanel is a global success. But things weren't always rosy for the French company. It had to survive harsh economic times and even a world war to get there. Most of its success can be traced down to the courage and determination of the company's founder, Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel was trying to build a fashion juggernaut in the early 20th century France, a period where the world was still considered a man's world. But like all who are destined for success, Coco Chanel remained on the path of her dream, even when it felt like the whole world was crumbling down. As you will see, Coco Chanel had to make sacrifices if her fledgling company was to survive the troubled waters ahead of it. As a result, her fashion brand is still moving strong nearly 50 years after her death. But how did she do it? How did she build Chanel into the company it is today? And what lessons can we learn from her story? We will be looking at all of these and many more in today's video. Before we begin, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on videos like these. The story of Chanel begins with a little girl known as Gabrielle Chanel. Gabrielle Bonheur Chanel was born on the 19th of August, 1883, in Sommer, Western France. Her father, Albert Chanel, was a street vendor who sold clothes and undergarments, while her mother, Eugenie de Vol Chanel, was a laundry woman who worked for a charity hospital in her hometown. Her parents were poor. Her father was always traveling while her mother had to work extra hours. Gabrielle was the second child of a family of six, and together they all lived in a one-bedroom apartment. Gabrielle's first major tragedy struck when she was only 11 years old. Her mother died at the young age of 32. The father, who was a nomad, decided to send his sons off to work as laborers while the daughters would go off to live in an orphanage. Although life in the orphanage was hard and demanding, Gabrielle made the most by learning to sew. This sewing would one day make her a global celebrity. For now, however, she would remain at the orphanage. After leaving the orphanage, she got employed as a seamstress. At this time, she was nursing a dream of becoming a stage performer. Whenever she was not sewing, she would sing at a nightclub, often populated by cavalry officers. Coco's luck improved as she became a performer at a local cafe. She was a poseuse whose job was to perform in between the performances of other stars. One of her favorite songs to perform was Who Has Seen Coco? And that's how she got the nickname Coco. Coco left that first nightclub and sought employment in Vichy, France. She tried to get singing gigs, but she was often turned down. After many disappointments, she returned to her hometown. She was already beginning to quell her dream of becoming a stage performer by this time. Instead, she had her eyes set on becoming a professional seamstress. But before then, she had to find love. Coco Chanel was only 23 years old when she met a young ex-soldier, Etienne Balson. Etienne Balson's family owned many textile factories and provided uniforms to the army during the World War. Coco Chanel met one of Balson's friends and fell in love with him. The name of the gentleman was Captain Arthur Edward Capel. Capel helped fund Coco's new passion, sewing designer clothes. In 1913, Chanel opened her first store in Deville. Her product line included high-quality casual wear that was ideal for leisure and sport. This included hats, sweaters, blouses, and jackets. The store was located in a great spot the center of town with fashion stores right behind it. Chanel was supported by her sister Antoinette and her aunt Adrienne. The two women would wear Chanel's clothing and walk through town modeling the outfit for all to see. Coco Chanel was careful to only release clothes of the highest quality. This made her popular among the affluent women of the time. Chanel decided it was time to double her successes. She opened another store in Biarritz on the Côte Basque. This store was close to the wealthy Spanish elite, so it drew in many high-profile clients. The business became so good that Coco Chanel was able to repay Capel's entire investment by 1916. 
After five years since her first boutique was launched, Coco Chanel decided it was time to go big or go home. By that time, she was already a famous face in fashion, but she was nowhere near where she wanted to go. Coco Chanel opened another boutique on 31st Rue Cambon in 1921. This boutique was one of her most successful and famous. It featured hats, clothing perfumes, fragrances, and jewelry. That same 1921, she launched one of her most successful products ever, Chanel No. 5. It was an elegant perfume she created with the help of the highly successful perfume maker, Ernest Beau. In 1924, Coco Chanel introduced her makeup line. She was inspired by a tweed jacket the Duke of Westminster wore while on a night out. This tweed jacket would go on to inspire a line of women's suits that Coco Chanel added to her boutique. In 1924, Coco Chanel entered a deal with the Wertheimer brothers, who agreed to finance Coco Chanel from production to marketing and distribution. The Wertheimers would receive 70% of all profits, while Coco would receive 10%. Later on, Chanel didn't like the arrangement, and she tried unsuccessfully to renegotiate the terms of the deal. By 1926, Coco Chanel launched another hugely successful product, the Little Black Dress. The dress was inspired by an opera that she had attended. Chanel came back and decided that she would get every woman to dress in black. When the Little Black Dress was released, Vogue featured it in their magazine and called it an instant success. By 1931, Coco Chanel got an opportunity to go to Hollywood. She had met a man named Samuel Goodwin who offered her $1 million if she would come over to Hollywood and sew outfits for movie stars. Coco Chanel agreed, and soon she was in America. She designed outfits for personalities like Marlene Dietrich, Greta Garbo, and Ina Claire. As one who loves stage life, you would think that Coco Chanel would remain in Hollywood for a long time. However, that wasn't the case as she soon left, claiming that Hollywood was the capital of bad taste and vulgarity. By 1935, Chanel had at least 4,000 workers and five boutiques at Rue Cambon. Things became bad for Chanel in 1939 as war broke out, and she was forced to close her boutiques. Only 31 Rue Cambon was allowed to open, limiting her operations to perfume and jewelry. At that time, demand for her perfumes was very high among American soldiers. By 1954, the war was over long ago, and Coco Chanel decided to return to Paris. At that time, Dior was the dominant fashion brand, and it had established a very old-school feminine style called the New Look. Coco didn't like the New Look, so she switched things up a bit. She first reopened her couture houses and brought back her tweed suit. She expanded the style of her products by adding bell bottoms and pea jackets. As a result, Coco Chanel became more successful than ever. By 1955, she released the Chanel 2.55, a luxury handbag that came with a strap. This was the first of its kind. The bag quickly became popular with the affluent ladies of society. Coco would continue to be active in the business until 1971, when she passed away. The first lesson Coco Chanel's life teaches us is to dream big. Coco Chanel was born into abject poverty. Her mother died when she was 11 years old. Her father then gave her to an orphanage where she learned sewing. Even though she came from a small background, she didn't settle for a small life. She dreamed of achieving big things, putting a lot of effort into them. Even when she was rejected, she refused to give up. She was turned down severely as she tried to become a stage performer. Then she became a luxury fashion designer. Coco Chanel is living proof of what we can achieve when we don't stop believing. One of Coco Chanel's most famous quotes is, my life didn't please me, so I created my life. Coco Chanel's second lesson is that experimentation leads to great things. Even after hitting success with some of her earliest products, Coco experimented with new pieces. She could have stuck to what people were already buying, but she knew that she would have to do something different if she really wanted to stand out. She brought out hits like the tweed suit and the little black dress. When she released new products, she didn't know if they would succeed as the other ones. 
but she knew it was more important to experiment than to remain in your comfort zone. The result is that the Coco Chanel brand still lives on even after 100 years since it was launched. Lastly, Coco teaches us never to settle for less. There were a lot of reasons why Coco shouldn't have made it. She was a female in a man's world. Plus, she grew up at an orphanage. But none of these reasons were enough. Coco refused to settle for any of those reasons. A great example of this refusing to settle was when Chanel came out of retirement at the age of 71. The French press ridiculed her, claiming she was too old for the world of fashion. But Coco Chanel had never been one to listen to her naysayers. Instead, she chose to pursue her dreams, even though they would be more difficult. This made her an icon for many people, especially women of that time. She inspired many of them to seek out and live their own identities. That's one of the reasons why she is also a major player in the feminist movement of the early 20th century. Coco Chanel took risks that many people will be afraid to take today. That's the end of today's video, guys. We hope you had as much fun as we did. Make sure to like the video to let us know that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on our latest releases.